Welcome to another episode of the Oxygen Not Included Beginner's Guide series and we are here in our sandbox mode because I'm going to show you how to do a, a basic cooling loop. There is a version of this that is more uh, fine-tuned but I won't be going into that. Uh, if you're interested into more details about cooling and looking into how to cool to like a very specific degree I recommend checking out GC Fungus. Um, he has a series called Tutorial Bites, which I highly recommend, and he has one on cooling. So I would check that out if you want uh, more details and if you want something more advanced. So what I have here is oxygen at 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Do be aware that some of the numbers I'm going to say are going to be a little different. For most people, if you haven't changed your temperatures from Celsius, so I will try to mention those where I can. So I have it in 125, so it's just hot, um, as you can see by the um, HUD here. And then I have some polluted water. But what we're going to be using is a stir steam turbine, which I want to call it a turbine, steam turbine, over a, a thermo aqua tuner. And what this guy will be doing is you put in warm liquid, it will remove 25 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or 14 degrees Celsius from the liquid. And then uh, you can use that to cool off a room, but doing so heats up this room, which is why you have it over a steam, steam turbine, because then you can convert that heat that this is off of, uh, putting into power. So we have if we look at the plumbing this looks a bit chaotic right now um what we're doing is we're sending in the liquid we use a bridge here to attach to the cooling loop so it doesn't overfill because once this is full it won't try to put any more in and then what we have it doing is going into a thermo sensor because if it gets too cold um the liquid will freeze and that will break your pipes. So we want to be making sure that we're not sending something in too cold. So if it is too cold, we will send it over a loop to bypass the tu aqua tuner and then send it back uh, through the loop to uh, cool again. What we you use to cool with uh, kind of depends on your situation. Most people will be using polluted water because it has a lower freezing capacity than uh, normal water. Uh, eventually you could use something like super coolant, but that's pretty late game. So polluted water works uh, the best. And then the reason this is kind of like a mid game thing is because this takes plastic and then this, you need to be using steel in here because eventually this will get warm enough to turn the water into steam and then you run into overheating and melting problems. So you'll want to be building like your aqua tuner out of steel you'll want to use this as steel so nothing has the potential to melt and then for the pipes we have in the places you don't want to be cooling you'll be using insulated liquid pipes probably made out of igneous yep made out of igneous so it'll help it uh not cool where you don't want it so like you don't want it cooling off in here and then in the rooms you do want it to cool off, you can either use regular pipes made out of granite, or you can use, let's see, I think I have some back here, some radiant uh, liquid pipes for somewhere where you really want to cool. Uh, you can use this, but they're a little more expensive, which is why you want to use regular pipes made of granite if you can, and where it's not super important. So I'll walk you through the step-by-step -step here. We have it coming in and then we send it up into this. So what you'll want to set this to depends on the liquid you're using and what temperature you're trying to cool an area down to. So I'm going off of, let's say 55 is what I want my ideal room temperature to be. You'll want to do half of what your aqua turner aqua tuner does. So because mine is in Fahrenheit, I want it to be 13 degrees over because 25 doesn't divide well. If you were in Celsius, you'd have it seven over because once it goes through the aqua tuner, it will take away that 
uh, 25 or 14. And so you kind of want an average temperature. So you, it'll be either, most of the water will be either seven above or below, or in my case, 13 above or below. Um, just because it kind of creates like a sawtooth motion. I can show you, uh, an illustration from GC fungus, um, to kind of illustrate how it, you're kind of aiming for this middle temperature, but because of the way this works, you'll want it to be half above when it kicks on and half below where it doesn't. You also want to make sure that this temperature is 20 degrees Fahrenheit or 14 degrees Celsius above the freezing temperature of this liquid. So if we look at polluted water, freezing point is negative five Fahrenheit. So you want to be 25 degrees above that. So what I have mine set to is 78 for right now. Um, and then if it is cool enough, in, so if it's below this, it will uh, go up and around and skip the aqua tuner and go through the loop. But if it is too warm, it will go through the aqua tuner and just go straight through here. Then what we have it doing is coming up here to cool the steam turbine because this can overheat and we don't want that. So we want to be be making sure this is staying cool as well. So you just want this coming through, cooling this area, and then after it's cooled that, you can send it off into your base or another area that needs cooled. In this case, I have just a room of oxygen to represent the base, and then it'll come back into this system. Let's go ahead and see it working. Right now, it is um, cool enough, so it's not going through the aqua tuner, so it's skipping through right here. Uh, and then, as you can see, it will slowly start uh, changing its temperature. And you can see it's cooling off this room here. And you can see that up here it's really cooling it. So the liquid is leaving at 64 right now. And then it's coming up and it's cooling off this area. And then it's, uh, you can see that it kind of warmed up a little bit. Some of us 65 because this room was a hundred and something. And then it's coming back down in here. And then it's uh, trying to cool off this room as well. Because this is such a small loop, we're not having quite the same effect with this getting warm enough that this is kicking on a lot. Um, but when I go back to the main game, it'll be cooling a much bigger area, so it will be warming a lot more, which will mean this is going to be kicking on a lot more, which will then warm up this area, create steam. When it comes to filling this room, there's probably two techniques. Uh, you can put in two different liquids. Uh, you could do like polluted water and then salt water or something. So this room becomes a vacuum basically with just the liquids. And then once they turn into steam, it'll just be steam. Or you can create the vacuum and just add uh, water and then wait for it to, to heat up. I'm going to show you all of the overlays here. So we have power. Uh, this does use a lot of power, so beware of that. Uh, this can put out a bit of power, but it has to be once this is running and hot enough that there is steam. And then depending on how much steam and the temperature changes how much this produces. So it's not exactly reliable in this situation. So we'll need a lot of power here. And um, then we have our plumbing. Make sure you're checking which way your bridges go, because if you're like me, that's a very difficult task to make sure they're all facing the right direction. <laughs> and then here is the automation. And then this guy, again, will be set based on what you're going for and the liquid that you're using. If we were to just change this to, let's say, 30 degrees, we can see this work a bit harder. So now because things are going in at 60 and it needs to be 30, this guy is running and it's not using it's not using this skip. So you can see as it kicks on, this makes it much warmer in here. And now that this is warm enough that it's creating steam, this guy will start running. You can see it's getting quite warm in here. And so if you were using the wrong kind, of metal, this stuff would uh, melt. All right, so now that we have the basics, I'm going to try to implement this in my game. 
can't remember what state I left this area in at the end of the last episode, but uh, this is their rooms that I ended up making. Had a lot of fun coming up with all these designs. Do you think I might need another coal generator? These guys produce uh, 600 and I think that used 1200. So that's not ideal. We'll have to come up with uh, other sources of energy, but for now, I think this is what we'll do. All right, so the way I made this area into what's going to be a vacuum is I have filled up this empty space, like row after row, uh, and then I have started my water lock. We have the bottle, bottle emptier, and then we've added some drops of water here. As long as we have any amount of water here, you've automatically created the water lock. I just prefer to have more, but it's unnecessary. That's enough. Um, and then I have built up against the building. I am leaving this to be diagonally built so that there's no gas getting in here. Like so. So yeah, that's how I created this into a vacuum. All right, so you need to make sure that you get this really cleaned out because this isn't something where you can just leave it open with a, you know, liquid lock. Uh, the temperatures are going to be enough that they'll, unless you have like oil or something, that you can't just leave a liquid lock. So you want to make sure you get everything right the first time and you get it all cleaned out and that it's exactly what you want uh, from the start. I'm currently working on producing the steel. Over here in the refinery, I've expanded this loop to try to cool the um, liquid even more before it returns down there. So I'm starting to work on some of the pipes and stuff. So I have done the pipes that will loop around and cool this, and then I'm planning on where that will head on out. I uh, will then need an another line that comes back down that will re-enter the system. Um, and then I've got a ladder here so I can start building that. The hard part is going to be deciding where in this mess I can weave some pipes for cooling. <laughs> it's uh, it's definitely going to turn into spaghetti, which is not ideal, but it is what it is. Um, and then I'm still working on the steel on the side here. You can see that it's starting to create uh, meltage and stuff over here. Been sweeping up ice to uh, send into our water over here. You can see that it's warming up because we have a tropical, um, and they these fish morph based on the temperature. So you can see that this is getting warmer. Ooh, yay! Let's go ahead and sweep that guy. I've just been letting the fish on this side die off after getting their egg, so that I can finish getting rid of the germs over here. There's not a whole lot left, which is good. And then we can open this back up again. Uh, <laughs> I think I'll probably end up ending this episode here in a minute, even though I don't have this quite finished. Builds and things like this take time in this game. <laughs> um, I am thinking that after this guy, the next thing I might consider... I just love these guys falling over here and freezing. Uh, one of the next things I might consider doing would be an industrial block with steam um, but unless anyone can think of something in particular they want to know and if you do let me know, know in the comments um, but I may switch like end this series and begin another one of these but with the DLC uh, I have recently purchased it myself and so I've been playing that in the background so I think once you get up to like knowing how to make steel and plastic and getting maybe into the industrial brick and learning how to cool stuff that you kind of have everything you need to start messing around and exploring with other systems for yourself so i think that might be a good place for us to end this particular series and then to shift over into one of these but with the dlc so if you have anything you want me to talk about before ending this one uh, let me know in the comments and uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode and until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day.